All right, so this problem says a total charge Q is distributed uniformly through a spher throughout a spherical shell of inner and outer radii R1 and R2, respectively. Show that the electric field due to the charge is um, zero inside um, between R and R1 in the shell. It's that. So it, since the charge is uniformly distributed throughout the spherical shells, that tells you that it's an insulating shell. On a conducting shell, all the charge would reside on the surface. Okay, so the shell is an inch, this is made of, it's a styrofoam shell or something like that. Okay. And the electric field within the shell is not zero, it's not conductor. And outside the shell, it's behaving like a point charge. Okay. So there's R1 and there's R2. So what we want to show is the electric field here is zero. The electric field here is given by this expression. And the electric field here is given by this expression. That's what we want to show. Okay. And what they tell you is the charge is uniformly distributed throughout. So you guys get the idea. Okay, let's find the charge density. The charge density is the total charge divided by the volume. And uh, so the volume of this shell is the volume of the outer sphere minus the volume of the inner sphere. Yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Now, that's the charge density. <clears throat> okay, uh, so let's do the electric field inside. I'll do one at a time. Okay, so again, from the symmetry of the problem, okay, so if there was any electric field inside, you would think that um, the electric field um, would, um, if there was any electric field, it should be pointing in this direction, right? So, and out out there, it would, uh, well, inside it should be pointing like that. If you, let's say, in this room, if you smear this roof, the floor, and the walls with positive charge, the electric field in this room would be pointing like that. And if it was a spherical room, it would be pointing toward the center. Okay, so now let's uh, draw... A Gaussian surface, here's the Gaussian surface we'll draw. A sphere centered around there. Now this flux should equal the charge inside the Gaussian surface. And since the charge inside is zero, inside that Gaussian, inside this Gaussian surface is zero, that means this electric field should be zero. And you can draw that Gaussian surface anywhere. Okay. So that implies E dot dA is zero, implying E is zero everywhere inside. So you really can't have any electric field there. 
So the electric field is zero. All right, so now let's do part B. Okay. So for part B, we are finding the electric field uh, between R1 and R2. Okay, let's... Uh, Okay, so now for our Gaussian surface, this will be our Gaussian surface. Okay. And uh, let's say the electric field is like that. There's the electric field. All right, so uh, we'll apply Gauss's law, the flux through the flux through this surface is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon naught. And what is the charge inside? All this charge is the charge inside that surface. Okay. So that charge is the charge density times the volume and the volume of and this volume is, okay, so by the way, we are finding the electric field at distance r, where r is less than r2 and greater than r1. Okay. So that charge density is uh, charge density times the volume. And the charge density is, remember, from q divided by 4 pi by 3 r2 cube minus r1 cube you find the charge density times 4 pi by 3 r cube minus r1 cube this volume is the volume of this sphere minus the volume of this sphere which is that divided by epsilon naught so all this stuff is just this stuff, just the right hand side. The left hand side is what will contain the electric field, but I just am doing this, I'm just simplifying here. Uh, this cancels with that, so this is Q by epsilon naught times R cubed minus R1 cubed divided by R2 cubed minus R1 cubed. Okay, and the left hand side, the flux is given by the electric field times the surface area of this thing. The electric field is going to be uniform. What is the surface area of a sphere? Four pi r square. Okay, so this is going to be e times four pi r square. All right, so we'll calculate the electric field, simplify the electric field. So the electric field is given by Q. Um, I'll bring the four pi epsilon naught there. Okay, so it's four r square and r square minus r1 square uh, cubed r2 cubed minus r1 cubed okay so let me rewrite this uh, this is k so I'm going to rewrite this like so r cubed minus r1 cubed 
divided by r2 cubed minus r1 cubed times k q by r square. So that's the electric field inside the shell. Okay, and let's look at this. So what we have is the electric field, oops. What we have is the electric field in this region. Okay, so the electric field is like that of a point charge. Okay, uh, except, oh, mm. okay. This charge, total charge is multiplied by this fractional part. This, this is a number less than one. See, R is between R2 and R1. So this number is smaller than that. This is smaller than one. That's multiplying this Q. So the electric field in this region is as if it's from a point charge, except that the fractional charge is just this charge. Okay. So this charge is not producing any electric field at that point. And which is what we saw anyway. Any outside charge is not producing any electric field inside. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, rho, the charge density. Here's the charge density that we calculated. Charge density tells you how much charge you have per unit volume. Okay. Now we just have to calculate the electric field outside. So part C. And um, so now we're calculating the electric field out here. at a distance r. Now this is E again flux is uh, Q inside divided by epsilon naught and so this is E times 4 pi r square and Q inside is just the total charge. The charge inside this surface is this total charge which is Q. Yeah. Divided by epsilon naught. So for R greater than R2, the electric field is just uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R square. K Q by R square. So the electric field is just this sh shell of charge for fields outside is just behaving like a point charge. So like I said again, as long as you're outside Earth, the Earth's gravity is like it, like as if it was a point mass. Okay, same thing for this. Okay, so that completes that problem. And we will stop here today.